What is going on, guys? Uh, welcome to another sports vlog. This is my 17th. I am Justin Crumley, and I am joined by my brother from another mother, the living legend himself, Josh Thompson. Say hello to the fans and everybody who's watching. Hey, guys. Uh, yeah, I expect to see him a lot more because we've been hanging out too much, pretty much. We have nothing to do. So, Grown men doing little men things. Yeah, like playing Xbox and watching cartoons and shit. And complaining about stupid players on our, Pretty much. our favorite teams. Yeah, and we get to complain in front of the camera, which is what you guys are going to get to see today. So without further ado, let's get started. Let's start with Michigan football. They beat Northwestern 10-9. to Probably the worst offensive stand I've ever seen. Well, but, I mean... But it's Michigan football. Yeah, it's fucking <laughs> Michigan. They've been awful offensively off season. But Frank Clark and Jake Ryan really stepped up. Especially Frank Clark. That guy was like black JJ Y fucking <laughs> smacking balls everywhere and, and keeping Northwestern out. And he made the big tackle at the end. Yeah. To keep him from getting that two pointer. Thank God. Which I excuse me, which I actually thought was stupid on Northwestern's part. I thought they should have just kicked the PAT. But they didn't want to go to overtime because they've lost the last two years to Michigan overtime. Yeah, I kind of wouldn't want to go to OT either then. I wouldn't either. Quite honestly. Northwestern's coach is a hothead. Oh, yeah. What's he's a good He's Fitzgerald a good coach. Patrick yeah, Pat, Pat, uh, Patrick Fitzgerald. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. He's a good coach. I'll give him that. But he is a hothead. But, I mean, you know what, though? I don't really care what anyone says. Birdie Hope's still going to get fired. Oh, fuck yeah. I don't care how well they do. I don't uh -huh. care if they end the season 7-7. Eight and five or yeah, something. Yeah, they need to win shit. one more. I don't even become, care. Yeah, they they could become bowl eligible in two weeks, and I still think they're gonna get, he's gonna get fired. Michigan wins. Yippee! Any win will will do. They play Maryland in two weeks. So proud to be five hundred. Yeah, yeah. This this is where we're at in this in this point. We used to be proud, you know. Yeah, you see, you, anything below double digit wins was a bad thing, and now all yeah. of a sudden we're praying for six. Yeah, that's. Pretty fucked up. Okay, let's let's move on to something I've been looking, kind of looking forward to talking about. I did want Michigan State to win this one. Sparty got their asses handed to them by Ohio State, forty nine to thirty seven. <sighs> Thank God, bro. Well, you know what? I I wanted Sparty to win that one because I don't like. I hate Ohio State. I don't like Sparty, but. I, I, I'd be lying if I said I wasn't laughing at them because they well, were just terrible. It's, it's one of those things where I hate Ohio State, but I really get tired of loudmouth Michigan Sparties. State fans yeah. more. Sparties. I, you know what? Some of them are loudmouths, I'll admit. I hate to say this, but MSU might have won last year, but it was never their Big Ten conference ever. No, never you won. know what? They're, 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 for college standards, they call them old because a lot of their players are seniors. Jeremy Langford is going to the draft this year. Yeah, they're going to be... Connor Cook is going to the draft this year. And I want to get into Connor Cook. Okay, he's not a bad quarterback. I've, you know, I know I said he wasn't that good. I don't think he's great. I He's okay. He's He, he can win. But for God's sake, and this goes to all the Sparties I saw, I talk about how he's going to be first pick overall in the draft. Bullshit. There is no fucking way. If Oakland gets the first pick in the draft, do you honestly fucking think that they're going to pick up a quarterback when they already have one in David Carr. Let alone a quarterback that's mediocre compared mediocre to some of the other compared ones. To like Marcus Mariota, uh, Bo Wallace. So yeah, there's a couple coming State's out of yeah, there's a couple coming out of the SEC. Yeah, like, and there's, there's a couple just, coming out of the Pac-12 that yeah, are just better than let's anyone not forget, in the Big Ten. Let's not forget Braxton Miller. I mean, the guy's injured, but he could. He's still going to play. He's probably gonna be you know, like what's his name was uh, wide receiver or something. No, no, he's gonna be like uh, the other guy that got in trouble from Ohio State. Terrell Pryor. There you go. Terrell Pryor. Yeah, yeah. That you was. You ever notice that? Yes. They can't keep their quarterbacks healthy. Yeah, they can't. Troy J.C. Smith. Barrett might want to keep a yeah, eye over his wanna, shoulder. Yeah, he might want to sleep with one eye open. Fuck yeah, <laughs> man. He'd uh, be the J third one. J.T. Barrett played a hell of a game against the old, uh, Michigan State. He had five touchdowns he had when five, I last yeah, watched. Yeah, I think he had six. Destroyed. Five, well, they won 49-37. And they, I mean, I saw J.T. Barrett making throws, making passes. I was like, no way. That fucking receiver caught the ball. Oh, my God. Yeah, he was, they you were. Know, Michigan State got outplayed offensively and defensively. Their defense looks awful. Like they kept saying, "Oh, Sparty's defense will win the game for him." 
Thank God their def their defense got fucking handed yeah, to them. Yeah, I watched. I watched. I mean, they more got guys destroyed. Backpedaling the whole game. Than it was. Else. It was like Oregon all over again. It really was. Ohio State dominated Sparty. Unless Michigan can beat Ohio State in three weeks, which I really hope happens, but I just don't see it this year. That's the only way Michigan State will be able to head into the Big Ten championship. And and even then, they got to hope for Ohio State to lose their next. I think three. Too, you know, Ohio like State has to lose out. Yeah, and U Michigan has, has to, to win out. Yeah, and Michigan State has to has lose to out pretty much because we would have to beat Ohio State to, with the, to get the tiebreaker. We can't yeah. get a tiebreaker against no. LSU. No, we can't. We we no. So I, I meant for like Sparty to take the division. Oh I don't, well, I don't, I don't want either of them winning. I, no, <laughs> no, no. But they probably will. Ohio State is probably my pick for. The Big Ten East. Yeah, I don't see. I don't see anyone in the. And Big I think Ten in the West, there. it's probably gonna be Nebraska. Oh yeah, for sure. So, yeah, let's. let's so it's gonna be Nebraska, Ohio State. Okay, so basically, Connor Cook was terrible this game. Uh, Tony Lippett didn't do much. Jeremy Langford did his job. He did what he could. I still think Sparties need to give Jeremy Langford more credit. Those big men need to ice their wounds. They got beat up. Yeah, they did. I, sides. I, in my opinion, Jeremy Langford is going to be a, a – uh, he's going to nail it in the NFL. I think he will. I really do yeah. think he has a future. The MSU always seems to produce pretty good running backs. Yeah, Le'Veon, anything. Le'Veon Bell. A couple. You know, that's, that's one. But, I mean, they always have good running backs, especially in college. Oh, yeah. They always have good yeah. running backs. I mean, the yeah, transition for, to the NFL. For Ohio State, that, it's like – Wide receivers. Michigan has uh, like offensive linemen, <laughs> D linemen. Uh, they got Jake Ryan, who's going to be, in my opinion, probably going to be a top ten pick, possibly. Hope he returns. Jake Ryan. Yeah. Yeah. Does he have one more year? Yeah, he's a I junior, think he, right? Yeah, I think he is. Maybe. Yeah, because he played his freshman year. Yeah, yeah. He was ACL his sophomore year. Came back his junior year, right? I think I don't know. I know All he I blew know out his ACL. Yeah. So. Not knowing the way he's playing, though, he'll go to the draft. Oh yeah, he's playing and, very well. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if Oakland picked him up. They could use a they could use a guy like that. I'd like to see Detroit get him too. That'd be awesome. Yeah, they to have that, be nice to have, have that athletic, like a yeah linebacker. yeah one that won't blow his ACL doing a celebration. Yeah, and that's what we call our <laughs> captain. Speaking of the Lions, they won this past Sunday, twenty to sixteen. The offense was struggling, even though Calvin Johnson was back, which is a problem, but. Well, the Calvin defense, played well. Yeah, Calvin played good, but the offense still struggled. The defense kept them in. They had to come from behind, but a win's a win. I will take a win. Have you ever noticed, before you keep going, that Matthew Stafford, I was re- thinking about this, Matthew Stafford always picks one guy to throw to. Yep. Always. Yeah. It was Golden Tate when Calvin's gone. All of a sudden, Calvin has over 100 yeah. yards. The game comes yeah, back. Yeah, yeah. You know, uh, <laughs> Calvin's such a hard guy to cover, but... You got to figure when they play Arizona, Matthew needs to get the ball. Yeah, out to other they, they got New England in two weeks. I mean, these are two teams that are heavy on pass defense. That's going to be a problem. They but, have the two best teams in the NFL the next two weeks. Yeah, it's going to be a rough two that's weeks. It's going to be a rough one. I well, let, let's we'll get to that later. Uh, okay, so Miami and Detroit. I would not call this a great win because they had to come from behind against Miami. But a win's a win, and I will take it. Why do I not think this is a great win? Because they struggled against Miami. Granted, Miami's defense isn't bad. I'm not saying that, but... Our, our defense played very well. The Lions are, you know, they're kind of at that point right now where they should have manhandled the Dolphins, especially at Ford Field. I mean... Well, manhandling may not be one thing, but that score... At 20 we to should, 16... We, the should've 16 been, is fine. It should be like 34 to 16. Yeah, we need to score. Been, we need to start never the offense. Competitive. The offense, actually, I looked it up. I think their offense is ranked third, uh, like nineteenth. No, excuse me, like thirtieth or something. Because of all their, they have thirty first in pass run, yeah, rushing. Yeah, they're, they're, they're terrible. They're their run game like is fourth in passing or something, but they have terrible, abysmal running game. Yeah, they do. I was telling you, I'm telling you, man. Yeah, Joy Bell, Reggie Bush, Reggie Bush keeps getting injured. Joy Bell. See, that's is, the thing. That's the thing that we always remember when we talked about this before when we got Reggie Bush. Yeah, it wasn't going to matter gonna until he got hurt. Yep. Like, how long is he going to be good for? Obviously not that long. Okay, well, they go to Arizona this Sunday. I uh, let's. I want to hear your thoughts first. What do they have to do to win this game, and do you see them winning the game at all? Well, to win this game, 
one, they're going to have to score against a pretty good defense. Yeah. And two, they can't fall behind. This falling behind shit is getting old. They're not going to beat good teams. They're not going to beat New England. They're not going to beat Arizona. Going down by 14 points, 21 points. Hell, if they're down by even three scores, anything above three scores is way too much. 13 points, it's it's bad. They need to score. If they if they get fall behind, it's over with. Because yeah. Arizona isn't a team that's just going to fall apart in the second half like no. every other squad we've been playing lately. I mean, yeah, I understand that Detroit's good, but you can't fall behind. It just doesn't work that way. You can't keep coming from behind. Nope. Do you see them winning the game? Um, I mean, going into Arizona... And granted, they don't have Carson Palmer, but Drew Stanton, I think, is still a good quarterback. See, I think, though, Carson Palmer not being in the game I will be gonna... enough to keep them, keep Detroit in the game, though. Because that gives Detroit even more advantage on the side of the ball they're actually good at. So, it literally is going to yeah. come down if Detroit can score. If Detroit can't score guess, more than 10 yeah. points, they won't win. I guess if I had to say what they had to do, they got to spread the ball out. Because if, if, uh, if Stafford keeps going to Johnson... They're just going to put Peterson and Matthew well, on him. We're, no, we already know Peterson. Yeah, yeah and, and Patrick Peterson is is like up there with Darrell Rivas, Brandon Browner, Richard Sherman, like some of the best cornerbacks in the game. I would honestly say that uh, Peterson is second best behind Rivas personally. Probably, yeah. I, I can't argue with that. Um, not to take anything away from the other guys I mentioned, but yeah, I think they need good. to spread the ball out. Like if Ebron plays, hit him. Don't throw it to Pettigrew, for God's sake, because he's just going to drop the fucking thing. Uh, Golden Tate needs to... It's good old-fashioned drop back. Good old-fashioned drop back. Spread the ball out. Score, and for God's sake, do not fall behind. Because if you fall behind 14 to nothing, and you go into the second half down like 17-3 or something, you're, you're kind of fucked, because there's no way Arizona's going to go, oh, it's second half, we got to die now. Arizona is eight and one for a reason. They're the, they're the, they have the best record in the league. I mean, this this is going to be a tough game. Do I see the Lions winning? I I can't I can't say I can't say they will. I don't want to say that they're going to lose, but I just I can't see it. They're not a road team, and Arizona is I, even without Carson Palmer. I think I, Drew Stanton can still hold this game up. End of the first quarter, you'd probably be able to tell if Detroit's going to win or not. You know, I don't know about end of the first. I'd well, say if if Detroit's going down, if, if they're already down, it's yeah, be rough. if they're down like fourteen nothing at the end of the first, that's not good. Yeah, that's you could probably you could probably tell by how either how well they're playing or how flat. Yeah, they are, yeah. How, I mean, I, I'm, I'm sorry. I just be. I think it'll be a close game, but I just I I, I gotta go with Arizona on this. Just sticking to what I what I think, not what I want. I want the Lions to win, but I. I think uh, Carol, uh, Caroline already beat them somehow. I, I think Arizona is going to walk yeah, away with this Yeah, let's not talk one. about that a terrible game that we should never have lost. Yeah, yeah. Okay. New England, Indianapolis this Sunday night. Of course, my boys. Uh, okay. Uh, New England didn't play last week. They had a bye week. They play Indy uh, at Indy. Andrew Locke on fire. Is 0-2 against New England, has had two god-awful games against them. I don't see that. St- I still don't see that keep going at all. Yeah, I don't think Andrew Luck's going to throw, like, three or four picks. Unless, like, Revis and Browner and McCourty step up. I think the way New England's going to win this game is they just got to do what they did against Denver. Protect the pass, hold the run game to a minimum, and just keep scoring. Are they going Are they going to Indy? Yeah, they're, they're in Indy. It's going to be a tough that's, one. See, that's the thing. That's, why, that's why I kind of feel like Indianapolis might actually win this. They could. Behind, it's possible. At Lucas Oil, behind Andrew Luck, and yeah, his that's, squadron of wide oh, receivers. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it, going to be a tough one. It's going to be. It's either going to come. It's gonna, I think it's probably going to be whoever scores more. It could. Because I, I, I do understand that New England has a good offense. Yeah. But when you run up against two good quarterbacks, well, it's Indy, literally who's going to yeah. score more. It, it, Indy is the number one overall offense in the league, so it'll be interesting. Well, but their would, defense is, from what I saw earlier on NFL Network and on stats, their defense is not great. Well, I would not almost go as far as saying if Andrew Luck keeps playing like he is, 
he will be the av- the best quarterback to ever touch Lucas Oil Stadium. Oh yeah. Well, that's yeah. I mean, he's that's definitely playing better than fill. Peyton already. At least yeah, through his like career Peyton, so far. Yeah, if Andrew Luck gets that ring, I'd say he's already done as much as Peyton as far as championships go. Well, but I, mean, I, I am not one to consider Peyton Manning the best quarterback oh, of all no. time. I, 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 I don't, stats I, I don't think mean records, shit if you can't win. Yeah, if you can't win a ring, then you, you're doing you're, you're not you're not doing the most important thing. So I, I just can't go against New England on this. I, I want them to win. I think they can. I think they will. But it's it's a tough one. It's definitely up for debate. I'm not promising anything. Okay, let's move on to baseball. I forgot to mention this last week, but Andy Dirks got claimed off waivers by the Toronto Blue Jays. I don't care. I wasn't really that big a fan of Andy Dirks. He had back surgery, so who the hell knows if he'll even fucking play. And Patrick McCoy, who was a left-handed relief pitcher, got claimed by the Orioles. That's fine. I want to see Andrew Miller come in for him. Because the Tigers need to look at that bullpen. They need to fix that bullpen. And they may need to get another bat. And you guys will find out in a minute. Yeah. Um, Victor Martinez was named the Tiger of the Year. He won a Silver Slugger. And he's a finalist for the AL MVP, which I believe is being announced tonight. Maybe tomorrow. I don't I don't know. It, it's either tonight or tomorrow. I know Manager of the Year is going to be announced like either... Whatever day the MVP award is not announced, I'll come back to you guys next week. Maybe with him, maybe just me. I don't know. Uh, Ian Kinsler wins the Wilson Defensive Player of the Year at second base. He beat out Dustin Pedroia, who won the 2014 Gold Glove. Which makes me feel like it's a popularity contest. It, it, yeah. Gold like, Gloves are stupid. They really are. I, I, I thought concept. Kinsler should have won it, honestly. I mean, that's the same reason why guys win it back-to-back-to-back-to-back-to-back. To back to back to yeah. Back to back to back. Yeah. This I don't know. I, I thought Kinsler should have won it. But Dustin Pedroia was good on defense. But I, I don't understand how he wins that. But but Kinsler wins the Wilson Defensive Player of the Year at second base. It just doesn't make no sense. doesn't yeah. make any sense. Like, Gold Glove is all about your defensive skill, not, not what you did at the plate. And Kinsler wasn't great at the plate, but he wasn't bad, but like I said, it's defensive skill, and, and he was definitely an upgrade compared to Omar Infante. I, I don't care what anyone says. Oh, yeah, for sure. You know? Definitely, I agree. Okay, uh, Don Kelly, Evan Reed, Jose Ortega, and Justin Miller all opt out of their minor league contracts and enter free agency. Don uh, Kelly, oh, that's a big jump for Don. I mean, he's okay, but he ain't no. He wants to come back to Detroit, but the only thing they're willing to give him is a minor league contract, and he doesn't want that. So I don't see him coming back. What do you think of the three other guys, the relief pitchers, Reed, well, Ortega, and Miller? Well, I know Miller and Ortega were, and I, yeah. I and I mean, Evan Reed was no, but I mean, he was okay too, but he wasn't great. Started, None of them were good. He started off good, but then got really bad, and then so the whole like all them thing opting happened. out, and it, they were all given minor league contracts for a reason. Yeah, like so, they, I, I don't, I, I don't care honestly. <laughs> you know, it, it, I think Dombrowski is doing the right thing by cleaning out the bullpen like that. They need to do a lot of. They things need to bring in some so. more guys, like uh, like I said earlier, Andrew Miller. That would be a great lefty to have in your bullpen. And they just need to that, – that to me, that needs the most attention. And like I said earlier, they may need another bat because Victor Martinez and Max Scherz are both denied their qualifying offers and are now free agents. We I knew Max Scherzer wasn't going to accept it. I had a feeling Victor Martinez wasn't going to uh, accept it. If you don't know what the qualifying offer is, it's where you take one year on $15.3 million dollars. And if they if the player denies it and another team signs them, that team has to give up a, a draft pick. A uncondi- I think it's like a first round or, or the closest thing to. So the Tigers did the right thing by tagging these two. So now if they go somewhere else, we know Scherzer's going somewhere else. Martinez is going to be highly scouted. From what I've heard, the Blue Jays want him. I don't think they're going to be able to afford well, him. From his outing from last year, I wouldn't be surprised if that list was 30 teams long. Oh, yeah, so um, well, like NL he, teams don't want him because he, he can't do nothing but hit, and they don't do yeah, that makes sense. DHing. So well, I don't know. He can and, probably in play Boston, some. In Boston, doesn't probably doesn't want him because they got David Ortiz, but and they had Victor Martinez at one time to let him go. So uh, I heard Minnesota is interested, Toronto, which like I said, probably can't afford him because they busted their salary cap. Uh, hell, they let Adam Lynn go. So um. 
Who else? Uh, Chicago, the White Sox, Cleveland Indians are interested in him. Like, there's a ton of teams. God, let him not go back to a team. No, I don't. No, fuck no. Kansas City might want him, too, because they let Billy Butler go. All right, let's move on to hockey. Uh, The Red Wings lost to the Ottawa Senators last week, 3-1. Embarrassing, but what can you do? They lost the next night in OT to the Rangers, 4-3. Something I want to mention in this game. Tatar, I love you, man. And because uh, he, he scored with like seven seconds left and tied it. So we got that extra point. But unfortunately, Gustafson just couldn't hold on. And he's out for probably a little bit. Did he get uh, hurt that same game? He did against the Rangers. I'll, I'll, we'll get into that later. Uh, they beat New Jersey 4-2 to two on Friday. So that, that was a good win. They needed that. And Sunday, this past Sunday, they lost to Tampa Bay. Excuse me, they lost to Tampa Bay in the shootout, 4-3. to three. Fucking shootouts. But something I want to call out is uh, uh, Henrik Zetterberg. In overtime, he had, a, uh, he had an opportunity to knock, <coughs> to knock that puck in the net, and he didn't fucking take it. And it was a good shot. He would have scored. There's no way Ben Bishop would have stopped it. But he, he danced around the puck and missed the fucking net. And, and then Cromwell took a shot. Cromwell really played his ass off. Like, he did. Quincy did all right. Uh, I think Kendall had a, no, he had a goal Friday night. But some of the some of the more obscure Red Wings are stepping up, and that's really good to see. But the shootouts, I I don't know what it is. They got four days off. They play Chicago on Friday. Work on the shootouts because you have to win those points if you're going to go to the playoffs. You can't keep losing shootouts and hope to make the playoffs. Yeah, you got to get those Ws. Okay, I mentioned Gustafson. He dislocated his shoulder against the Rangers. So Peter Morazic was called up. I'm very excited. I love Peter Morazic. I really do. I think he's awesome. So he's, he's going to be the platoon guy with Jimmy now? Yep. Yeah. Well, he's in Grand Rapids now. He's playing two games. But Peter Morazic already has two shutouts in the NHL, and he's the AHL goalie, technically. He's going to be on the team next year. Gustafson, they, they wanted to give Peter Morazic more experience with like full-time goaltending. So Gustafson got a one-year deal from the Wings, and that's that's old news. But we're gonna get to see Morazic. I'm really excited to see this because this is this is probably our future after Jimmy Howard, you know, runs his course. Um, I like Jimmy Howard so far. I think Jimmy Howard's so been. Jimmy's a youngin though. Still, he's uh he's 30, 30, 31, something yeah, like that. That still makes you young when you yeah. think about Dominic Koshik and Chris Osgood. Oh yeah, yeah, they were yeah. Uh, Jimmy Howard's been exceptionally great this year. He has been fucking amazing. Man, he definitely year. did step up. You know, he's stepping up. The Wings just aren't giving him enough offense half the time. So, all right, this is the question I want to put to you guys. Should the shootouts be eliminated and replaced with three-on-three overtime, and should the coach get a coach's challenge, like in MLB? I think shootouts should go. I don't like him anymore. Maybe because I'm a Wings fan and the Wings suck in the shootouts, but I would like to see a three-on-three overtime. I think that'd be more exciting. Yeah, it'd definitely be more interesting than just guys wanting up the course. And just <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I do think the coaches should get a coach's challenge because I don't think the refs get it right all the time. And I think, I know, granted, they review a lot of them, a lot of goals and whatnot, but I do think that sometimes the refs don't see something or sometimes they make the wrong call. I think the coaches should be awarded one challenge. It should be like they do in MLB. One challenge. If you get it right, you get another challenge. You get it wrong, you're fucked. That's it. No more for the rest of the game. That's the question I want to put to you guys. Should the shootouts be eliminated, replaced with three-on-three overtime, and should the coaches get a coach's challenge? Okay, let's talk basketball. Not much to say here. The Pistons finally won a game against the Knicks, which actually kind of surprised me because they have Carmelo Anthony, and they're actually... Pretty good team. Uh, they beat the Bucks, but they <coughs> lost to the Jazz and they lost to the Bulls last night. They're two and five. Typical Pistons. Yeah. Woo! <laughs> you know, guys, I would be lying if I if I were to tell you that I expected great out of them this year because they just changed coaches again for like the umpteenth fucking time. They got a new general manager too. You know, Stan Van Gundy is both the coach and the GM. So. You, you got to give them time, and by time I mean a couple of years, to build a structure 
and go somewhere with it. It just makes no sense to me is how they have a couple really good guys on their first yeah. on their yeah on their, as their starters and they Andre just Drummond, Brandon Jennings, Greg Monroe, jo- um, Josh Smith, yeah, yeah, Candavious Caldwell Pope. I yeah, mean, like I don't understand how they, they struggle got so much. It's just chemistry is just kind of fucked, I guess. I, I guess so. It must I, be uh, something like that. I I don't know. I mean, I wasn't ashamed to see him lose to the Bulls because Derrick Rose played last night. Yeah, Derrick Rose is on fire. Lately. And when he does play, he's on fire. Yeah. Uh, Pau Gasol was pretty damn good. Like, the Bulls went out and made some adjustments. Yeah, they'll they'll probably be good contenders this year for sure. Absolutely. Especially with actually if Derrick Rose led yeah, the Bulls. Yeah, if Derrick Rose can stay healthy, I think the Cavaliers have competition. All right, guys, that's all we have for you today. Um, you know the you know the drill. Hit me up on Twitter at Cujo zero six two four one or him at Tom Josh sixty nine. I will tweet you back if you tweet me. I yeah. don't tweet all that often, but I will tweet you back. Yeah, yeah, he will. And you, you me, I I more than often follow back. Also, almost all the time. So if you want to follow me, just you know, let me know who you are. Uh, for Tom Josh sixty nine or Josh Thompson. If you want to call him that, the living legend. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Justin Crumley, and this is Cujo zero six two four one. Signing out. <laughs>